Hey guys, today I've created a super easy bullet wound special effects makeup tutorial for you. First off I'm removing any oils from Tommy's skin using a little bit of witch hazel. Then I'm going to mix together some sculpt gel to create the wound, whether you want to make an exit wound or an entry wound is completely up to you. You can mix all three components together, C gives you a little bit of flexibility but because we're applying this to the flat panel of Tommy's forehead we don't need any flexibility with the material so I'm only going to mix A and B together. Using my spatula at a bit of an angle I'm spreading this in a circle shape so we're creating a bit of a donut shape so the centre has no silicone on it. Once you've got the rough outline you can then use your spatula at a 45 degree angle to smooth out the edges. And you want to take your time with this because we want the edges to be seamless with the skin. For this I did look up some real images of entry bullet wounds and while you can be quite theatrical with it and go a little bit full on, in actual fact real entry wounds are very clean looking. That being said I always like things to look a bit more fun so I am going to add a few splits into the skin so you can see the texture of it otherwise it looks from a distance like you've just drawn a circle on your forehead. It doesn't have to be realistic it can be a little bit theatrical but I'm not going to make it overly gory. I'm using my spatula on the centre of the donut to lift up some of that silicone to create a little bit of texture to the edges so it looks like they're slightly rough and torn. When you look at the images of actual entry bullet wounds the skin looks as though it folds inward slightly and although that is probably more realistic I like the look of slightly torn edges so I'm using my spatula to drag through the silicone to create those splits in just a couple of areas. You want to do this when the silicone's already been applied and just before it sets because that way you're not going to ruin the shape that you created but it's also not too soft that it won't take the shape that you're trying to create. I've worked on a few films in the past where we've created bullet wounds and they are fun to create the exit wounds because it's really gory and it's full on but for YouTube and just for fun if you want to create it for say like when Halloween rolls around or if you're going to a fancy dress or you're doing a murder mystery then something like this where it's not super realistic but it's also not super gory would be ideal. So I've got the shape that I'm happy with and I'm going to leave that to set now. If you don't have silicone you can always make the bullet wound shape with some wax and then go over it with a sealant such as this one before you paint it. I'm tapping a small amount of the green marble on top to mattify the silicone. To add colour to my bullet wound I'm going to use my Skin Illustrator on set palette and I'm mixing together some of the flesh tones to create something similar to Tommy's own skin tone. I'm using a small duo fibre brush to tap this colour on in very light washes. You can see even though the silicone is a flesh tone, it's slightly more pink than Tommy's skin tone and as you can see when we apply this colour, it's a lot closer to Tommy's own skin tone. Moving on to the bloody tones, I'm using my Skin Illustrator FX palette and I'm mixing together some of the reds to create a light wash of blood to lay down as the initial base colour. It would be very easy just to paint this black because you've got a hole in your head and you think that's going to look more realistic but in actual fact when you look at a lot of the images they are very deep in colour but there's still a lot of texture. There's layers of skin visible depending on where your bullet wound is there can be layers of fat so I want to try and capture that so it just looks a little bit more interesting to look at rather than just being a black hole in the head. Once I've laid down the initial colour across the surface of the wound, I'm then taking that onto the walls that we've created using the silicone on the inside. So I'm painting these red before I'm going to go in with deeper shades to emphasise the depth. It's ideal to use a small eyeliner brush for this because you can really use the tip to get into those tiny little split marks that we created using our spatula. On a lot of the actual real life images of bullet wounds, the skin looks quite charred around the edge. This is probably a mix of heat from the actual metal that's gone through the skin but also the blood that's rose to the surface and oxygenated. I didn't really want to delve too deep into the ins and outs of the bullet wounds. As I've got older, the gory things tend to bother me a lot more than they did when I was learning makeup 15 years ago. So I'm more just copying what I see on the image rather than sort of gathering the information to tell you exactly why what is what. So I've taken the very tip of the brush and followed the very edge of the walls that I've created with the silicone and as you can see it's looking a lot more realistic, even just for a normal cut. I'm also using the very tip of the brush to dab into the centre to create different depths of colour which makes it look more textured. A lot of the images that we looked at had a lot of bruising around the edges so I'm being very very subtle with some purple tones again from my Skin Illustrator palettes. 
So I'm using the very tip of the brush to stipple the colour on and then I'm patting over that with my finger to remove the colour so it just leaves a very light wash. When it comes to theatrical makeup, it can be really easy to be quite heavy handed with something, especially if it is for theatre basis because we need it to be visible from a bit more of a distance. But for television or if someone's going to be viewing your work up close, subtlety is the key, so work with a really light hand and very light washes. I've applied the purple tone along the wall of the silicone on the outer side of the wound and then I'm using the tip with an even lighter wash of the same colour, fading that outwards so it doesn't look like it just stops at the very end of the wall. And using the stipple motion creates texture to that colour rather than it looking like a flat wash. To create further depth so it looks like it's a deeper wound, we're going to use wound filler. And I'm using my spatula to apply this into the centre of the wound and I'm using a kind of smearing technique because I don't want it to sort of be thick and lumpy otherwise again the colour itself is going to look quite flat. I'll just zoom out so you can get an idea of what we're working with and how it's looking on the entirety of the face at the moment. I like to use two different types of blood for realism. One's the kind of blood you get that sits on the surface that's quite weepy looking, a little bit see-through but does have a hint of red to it. That's the one I like to apply all over first, even at the edge of the walls, because it gives a kind of glistening effect to the entire wound. For the blood that drips down, I like it to be the deeper dark blood. You could go crazy and add some splatter blood and stuff but for this look I'm just going to keep it quite subtle and I'm going to build up a little well at the very base of the wound. That way it's not covering the entirety of the wound otherwise you'll kind of lose all that texture that you've created. And by adding it at the bottom of the wound it's going to drip out and fall straight down the face. Obviously it needs to go in the way that your actor or yourself is going to be laying or standing or sitting. In films before I've done it where they're laying on their side so it drips down the side of their face. So just think about that before you apply your darker blood. And that completes my super easy bullet wound. I hope you've enjoyed it. I just thought it would be nice to break up the makeup tutorials and throw in a special effects makeup tutorial this week. Thank you so much for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you've missed any of my previous tutorials, it will be on screen for you. You can follow me outside of YouTube on Instagram and Facebook and I will see you next week.